excitement, uh, anticipation. Uh, you have to get through this day and then the fun starts tomorrow when you get to practice and uh, get to work with these guys. They've had a good fall. You know, they've really worked hard in the, in the fall period with, with Ryan in the weight room and with the coaches uh, in the uh, workouts that we've done in September. Um, I'd say these guys are as advanced as any group we've ever had at, at this stage. I've done as much work or more work as any group we've ever had, and uh, I'm very confident that uh, you know they're they're really as well prepared as they could be, and uh, I'm as ready to go and what I can remember. When I'm not ready to go, I won't be here. That'll be easy. <laughs> Coach, you know, I, I, you know, that's there, that's in the background. But you know, for a while we thought last year would could be the last year, so you know, we we got through it. You just have to focus on each game, and uh, you know, each team, and get prepared. And you you really don't think about the next year ever, anyway. So uh, th that's really no different. You know, you have to think about this year, this team, what we're doing, what we're getting ready for. And uh, that's the same as it is every year. Plenty of time to worry about next year, next year. So it's over the years, uh, how, uh, at this early stage, how accurate the assessment do you usually have of a team, especially in the year when you're losing so many key players? Well, that you don't really. No, what I've said, I think these guys have worked as hard as they can and as ready individually as they can be. Uh, as far as what kind of team they can be, uh, there's no way of knowing that at this stage. You know, last year we had so many veteran guys coming back. They had come off a successful season. Uh, there was no reason to think that they wouldn't be very successful at this stage of the year. This team is different. Uh, you know, we lost our three primary scores, our defense, defensive player of the year in the league. Uh, we've never had a team that I can remember lose this many guys who were such important parts of what we did. Uh, and if we had some, a team that was it, had lost even close to what this team did, we certainly weren't picked in the top 20 the next year. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really uh, a credit to the returning players that we have that people think of, the, think pretty highly of, that you could lose your four best players and uh, still be picked, uh, you know, someplace in the top 20, 15, 10, depending on who you're, who you're looking at. That's a little surprising. But we don't know. I won't know. So we get out there and see how they react. We got a very tough schedule early and uh, a lot of a lot of tough games. That'll help us figure out what we need to get better at. Jim, a lot of the analysts have talked about Michael and his expanded role this year. What do you kind of envision from him? And do you think he'll make the jump that a lot of people are forecasting he might? Well, I think Michael uh, had a great learning year last year. It wasn't always easy for him. Uh, because he's very talented, and in normal years, uh, he would have played more any normal year. Uh, he had a fourth pick in the draft ahead of him and two veteran, veteran guards. Uh, any other year, Michael would have played quite a bit. He did get game experience, and he did get some big games, and when he got in, he played well, and that's a good thing. It wasn't just that he played in the bad games. He played very well on the road against Providence. He played well down at St. John's. So you know, he's got some very positive uh, things. I think he learned a lot. I think his practices 
last year playing against Scoop, playing against, uh, he didn't like it, but playing against Brandon Reese every day, I think that was very helpful for his development. Uh, playing against really good players every day in practice is better than playing a lot in the games against bad players. So I think he got tremendous experience. I think he's ready, uh, more than ready. I think last year he you know, would have been an up and down year if he'd have played a lot. But he's way past that. He's progressed way past that. And uh, I think he's ready to hit the ground running. I don't anticipate uh, him having, uh, other than the normal, uh, you know, ups and downs that every player has, you know, with their freshman sophomores. Trevor Cooney probably benefited more from last year than we ever could have hoped. Uh, because of his work ethic, he just he just went off the charts. He, he just really worked unbelievably hard. Uh, he did a great job in the weight room. He played in practice. He played the most minutes in practice of any player. I never took him out of practice. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he uh, he really he was a, a very good player. Same story as Michael. Any other year, any normal year, Trevor would have played last year. Uh, wouldn't have been sure, but. It was the, the right thing to do, and he took tremendous advantage of it. He's a good basketball player. He's not just a shooter. He, he can do other things. Uh, and uh, he, had, he had a great year. He really benefited from last year. Coach Rakim was kind of in a different situation than Michael Carr was. You had to play him a lot more. You started him a lot, but he you know, spread up the minutes. I haven't seen him yet, but Tom told me that he put on about 20 pounds in the offseason. Rakeem is, yeah, I'd say he's put on 20 pounds. I think he's stronger. Um, I think he's certainly uh, much better prepared uh, to, to play this year. Uh, I expect him to uh, have, a, have a really good year. I think, I think he'll be ready. Coach, as far as the freshmen, Daywan and Jeremy, how much are you expecting them to play right away? Well, we have two freshmen. Uh, Jeremy Grant uh, is really, uh, I, I'd say, he had a, a opened some eyes up uh, of his teammates this fall uh, with his play. He's a very good player. I think he was underrated in high school. I think that he is uh, ahead of that, whatever that rating was, by whatever whoever made that rating. Uh, but uh, he, he's, uh, I think he's going to be a very good player. I think he's. Uh, He's shown a lot already. Uh, Daywan Coleman is a, uh, has a tremendous uh, history, winning cha state championships, and being the guy in a, in a, in a, tr in a tremendous program, uh, who's been extremely well coached. And uh, I think he's uh, more than ready to contribute uh, as a freshman. Coach, you spoke about First, uh, Mike Carter Williams, looking at the veteran side of the backcourt, and Brandon Trish. What have you seen of his evolution and his expectations for this year? Uh, Michael, Brandon. Trish. Brandon. Yeah. Well, Brandon Trish has been a good player for three years, and this year I expect him to be a great player. He's been a very good player, and I think he can go another step. And I would be very surprised if, if he didn't do that. He, he's. Uh, really deferred a little bit to the guards that were here. And I think he realizes that this is his year to, for him to step forward uh, on the offensive and defensive end. And I think he'll do that. I think he's prepared himself as well as any player I've ever coached. And I expect uh, that he'll have a great year this year. Even though CJ's one year behind Randall, is he in a similar sort of situation? Well, I think every 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 year when you lose guys, other people have to step up. And the other forwards, C.J. Fair and James Sutherland, I think are well prepared uh, to s step in and to play well. We, we, you know, Chris Joseph did a tremendous job for us for four years. And uh, these guys are well prepared and certainly able to, to step in, both guys.
Well, I think James has, has helped us. He's really contributed, and I think uh, he's ready this year to make a, another step up. Uh, I really do. I think he's a, a tremendous player. Yeah, I think uh, I was a little bit taken aback today. Uh, the chancellor has done an unbelievable job here at Syracuse. Uh, she allowed us to build uh, this building, which I think has made has been one of the probably the biggest influencing factors on us getting better. We've been quite a bit better the last three years. And uh, she made that decision along with uh, Daryl Gross. I think they were, they were huge decisions uh, for the basketball program. I think her relationship and, and working with the community is something that I've always felt was, was incumbent upon us to do. And I, I think she did that, no matter the criticism. And I think that was a, a very uh, outstanding leadership uh, example for, for all of us, and uh, I, I just think she's uh, done an unbelievable job with this university, and, and uh, her leadership has been, I believe, uh, without uh, without peril. She's, she's been tremendous for the entire university, and particularly for, I, I believe, for the athletic department. Her tenure, money has been put into you know, we had the one number one field hockey team in the country, a great cross country program, obviously women's and men's lacrosse, uh, the final fours and uh, winning championships and uh, women's softball. All, the, all these things have to come down from the top. The leadership has to come down and, and, uh, and okay that, prove that, and provide the resources necessary to, to do that. And I think sometimes that leadership is overlooked a little bit. Uh, we've, we've had tremendous leadership from the chancellor. I'm going to let the players come out. Uh, my summary would be we'll have fun tonight, and then we'll get ready to go to work tomorrow. And uh, I think this group will, uh, will be fun to watch play and uh, fun to cover. All right, thank you.